Good day, everybody, and welcome to Five Minutes with Shawnee. Mr. Sean Etten, would you say hello to everybody, please? Hello, everybody. Hey, it's Shawnee with my miss with Shawnee. Today's guest has been on several times before. Evan Britton, former NFL lineman, he played for the Chicago Bears and Jacksonville uh, Jaguars, second round pick in 2009, and just a, a wonderful guy, a very, a very, very intelligent, one of the smartest men I know, who's able to help heal himself because of the injuries he sustained. And today we're going to talk to him really about how he's overcome his in injuries and then how he's become independent hey again and what we built together. So thank you, Evan, for being on with us. Hey, Evan. Nice to see you, buddy. Good to see you, Jerry. Hey, uh, to our audience, we're having a little technical problem. So Sean and Evan can't hear or see each other, which makes it a little challenging. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of take over the introduction here or the uh, uh, the uh, interview and uh, put Sean out of his misery so he doesn't have to uh, feel like he's paying attention when he doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but I know the kid yeah. all too well, though. We spent a lot of time together. I understand. So, Evan, tell us a little bit about uh, – obviously, people appreciate you're an NFL football player, a lineman. You had lots of injuries, but – but there was one particular injury that was pretty, pretty rough and really knocked you out. You got the infection. Can you explain a little bit about what that whole thing was? Yes. Yeah, so my second year, the uh, summer before my second season in Jacksonville, I suffered a herniated disc, um, which basically, you know, triggered a uh, sciatic pain nerve pain down my leg down my right leg you know that pain is a it's a nerve pain it's basically the disc was pinching the nerve and that was sending a shock wave from uh, my right butt all the way down into my foot uh, creating numbness in the foot I couldn't feel my uh, right foot on the ground atrophied my right calf and hamstring and, and glute um, and that really lingered for um, a little over a year. I battled through that throughout the season uh, with a core regimen and a lot of stretching and flexibility until that season came to an end with a dislocated shoulder, torn labrum towards the middle of the season. Um, I got the shoulder fixed. Disc was not fixed. Uh, at the same time, going into the lockout, which was the NFL owners were locking the players out because we had not reached a, a new uh, collective bargaining agreement in time. Um, and so I was back at Arizona finishing my degree. I was nursing a shoulder injury as well as trying to figure out how to deal with this herniated disc situation. Uh, shoulder got better. Lockout ended. Um, came back for training camp going into that third season and you know my right I still can't feel my right foot on the ground my uh the back and the, the disc is still herniated I'm still dealing with that still sciatic pain you know one of the worst things about sciatic and sciatic nerve pain is that you'll wake up some days feeling as if it's totally gone it's disappeared mir miraculously and um you know only to find out that the next day it's still there um, you know, and I think it's a, it's a difference of millimeters within the body. Um, and so stretching and your core strength and how you're taking care of yourself is incredibly important through that time. So I come back for a uh, training camp. Um, I had to take myself out after just a couple plays at a time. Couldn't feel my right leg on the ground, was just totally unable to, you know, get any endurance into it or any strength into it. And how did so, you even? How did you even function? I can't fathom trying to stand in front of a, a defensive lineman or even a yeah. dummy, for that matter, and without a when you can't feel your foot. I mean, that's, that's what I did. I don't know. I, you know, it was just the mentality of you know I got to go out there and compete, and you're you know I'm obviously this is where all the you know pharmaceutical anti-inflammatories are coming into play, the cataflam, the indesin you know, whatever medication I could possibly take to get me out of pain to be able to compete against these guys is what I was going to do. And so uh, eventually it just became clear that I couldn't do it. I couldn't get it done. There, there wasn't going to be, 
like I wasn't going to recover from this. I needed to have surgery. So about two weeks in the training camp, I had a, a discussion with the trainer, with our team doctor, with our head coach, Jack Del Rio. And, um, you know, basically we came to the conclusion that I needed to have back surgery. I went in, had a discectomy. Um, really, I woke up, I came out of surgery, uh, literally completely out of pain. A piece of glass from, you know, the circuit board of my electrical system. Um, you know, my, I was, I was so much of my pain and anxiety and, and the stress I was feeling in my body from that herniated disc was relieved when I had that surgery. I started working my way back rather what quickly. What month was this, Kevin? About what, what time of year was this? This is, this is August of 2011. Okay. Uh, I build myself back through tons of Stairmaster and wearing a weight vest and strengthening my legs. And my, my strength was coming back incredibly quickly, very rapidly. I was gaining my strength and my, my stability back. And I really got myself back to just about the best I'd ever been. And uh, I had worked, I, you know, I'd come back a little bit even earlier than expected and played, uh, uh, jumbo tight end in a package early in game two of the season. I wasn't really supposed to be back till week three and ended up starting week three, week four. And I think about week five is when um, I woke up in Pittsburgh, uh, not week five, a little later than that, week seven or week eight. Um, I woke up in Pittsburgh, couldn't get out of bed because I was having such horrible back spasms. My back was literally locking to the oh. point I couldn't lift myself out of bed, sit down on the toilet. I could barely hold myself over the sink to brush my teeth. Um, I figured, hey, I'm going to take some Vicodin. I'm going to get a Toradol shot before the game, um, and I'll be ready to go. I'll get stretched. I'll get warmed up. It won't be a big deal. And so I got into the training room, still barely able to move. I, a coach later said to me, he was like, man, Ev, I saw you walk in from uh, team breakfast that morning to the bus and I could see how much pain you were in. And I was so in such awe because I was like, that's what we do, <laughs> you know? And I can't even know, believe you thought about playing, warming up and getting in there. after. I, I was going to do it. And so, um, you know, I got into the training room, I hit the table, I got, you know, as much massage and heat as I possibly could in about a 30 minute period. And, you know, it just wasn't going anywhere. I, I laid down on the ground in front of my locker to get one more stretch in. A coach came over to me and said, Ed, can you go today? I said, yeah, I tried to get up, couldn't get up off the ground by myself. And it was like, yeah, all right, Cam, you're starting today. So well, that was the beginning of a really a uh, strenuous time, you know, in my career where, you know, it took us another four weeks and two or three MRIs to figure out that there was an infection in the disc, um, you know, which then I was hospitalized for. They wanted to do, um, I, they had to do a biopsy in my, uh, of the disc. And so finally they figure out it's an infection. I go on eight weeks of intravenous antibiotics. A nurse is coming to my home to, uh, you know, inject this stuff into me daily. And uh, that ended, I, I worked myself back from literally not being able to walk around my house, not being able to hold myself up over the sink to wash my hands to, you know, walking miles down the beach to doing Stairmaster to doing full blown workouts to get myself back for that fourth season in Jacksonville. Um, you know, where I worked myself back in the starting lineup this was mid season, you know, mid mid career then, or, or right in the middle. That was, yeah, that was mid. That was my uh, third year in the league, and in mid, in the middle of that uh, eight weeks of intravenous antibiotics, uh, Coach Del Rio was fired, and the team was sold. From oh. Wayne Weaver sold the team to uh, Shad Khan, and the whole thing just flipped. So, it was you know it was really uh, a paradigm shift, I think, for, for probably for a lot of people. Um, definitely for me and my career and the Jaguars in general. Well, and obviously there's a great deal that just is just flat toughness and cutting it out. Obviously yeah. some degree of, of pain killers and things that help you and others who do this do it. Yeah. But 
what we're we're talking about this week is is kind of about personal independence. And here you are, uh, you know, the strongest of people, both mind and body, and and you're you're held up, you're holed up, you're you're under, you have an infection, you have all this stuff that keeps beating you down. So what we've been talking about with this week of independence is what drives a person emotionally, mentally, spiritually to move on. Obviously, you had a paycheck you wanted to earn, you were playing the game, you wanted to continue. But what was the part that really drove you on an emotional and spiritual basis, Evan, to keep you back in the game and, and to get you back at it? Uh, I think that definitely there's my own inner uh, toughness and, you know, drive to, you know, keep climbing, to continue climbing the mountain of life and never really looking at it as, you know, why is this happening to me? Um, you know, I think that life is filled with pain and struggle and it's, you have to be tough, you know, before anything else. And then, you know, from there, you know, it was about my wife. I had a newborn baby. I had, you know, wow. I was coming into my manhood. Um, you know, it, this was something that, you know, I was determined to work through. And, um, you know, nothing about it was easy. But, you know, it really helps to have great people around you as well. You know, right. I was supported by some really incredible people through some really difficult times. And I owe a lot to them. And, uh, you know, that's my wife. That's my mom. Um, it's my brother. It's my dad. And, uh, you know, really first and foremost, and having that, that group of individuals to support you in those really tough times is a, is a huge factor, you know, in remembering you're not in this thing alone. Yeah. No one is in this alone. We're all in it together, man. And everyone is experiencing something, you know, of one, some strife, struggle of one kind or another. And, you know, there's always someone there to listen, someone there to help and remind yourself of that. That's fantastic. And Evan, we're, we're about out of time today, but I, I really thank you for sharing both your heart and your struggles. And it's a, it's a fantastic story. And we, we've been privileged to have you on a couple of times before talking a little bit about different things. And we hope to have you come back again, if you will. Of course. I'd love it. All right. Next time, hopefully, I can see Sean. Yeah, next time, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to see Sean. Thanks, Evan. Yeah, thank you, guys. Okay, Sean, you still with us? Yes, I am, Jerry. Okay. I'm still here. I'm like, oh, I know you couldn't hear Evan, but he's he managing. You know, it's interesting, you, you know, Evan talks. I spent hours in, you know, months and days with him the last couple of years just really learning about who he is and designing our company together the guys I, I i call him the beast i mean he played through so much injury and pain because he wanted to drive that independence and he wanted to be a family man he wanted to be a husband he wanted to be a father he wanted to be a teammate and and he is just you know he is just he's my hero in that sense because he i mean what people don't realize at 21 and 22 evan knocked over junior sale Stop Clay Matthews from, from rushing in on the quarterback. Brian Cushing to J.J. Watts. This guy knocked over the best of the best and was forced to retire at the age of, what, 28 or 27? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm 45. I mean, he's a kid. And he's brilliant, smart, and he's just – everybody aspires to be after him, you know, like him. And to have him as my business partner and to have him as a good friend and to put him on the show is just such an honor, and I'm grateful to have that. I'm That's really right. Totally, I, I totally agree, Sean. And uh, we're we're running a little over time today, but if you would uh, tell everybody a little bit more about yeah. how you can get a hold of us here. Yeah. So everyone, please, we want your comments. You're all, you know, well, everyone here is recovering from something. You don't have to have a brain injury or a stroke or a plane in the NFL. We we really want to hear your stories right now. You're warriors. We're all warriors. This is a community. This is five minutes with Sean. You can find us Seanin.com. And if you want Evan or myself or Jerry to respond to you, please send us your stories. We'd love to have you on the show as well. It doesn't matter where you are. We, we can tie you in. So please follow us. Thank you for sharing this. And, and you can contact us at this Billy link that Jerry's going to put up right now. So yep. thank you all very much. Jerry, thank you for a great time. 
Sure. The next show, we can we can have the technical difficulties figured well, out. Well, we, we surely hope we do, but we hope everybody's enjoying having all these these interesting guests on, and we thank yeah. you for tuning in. Come tell talk to us at Bitly. Contact Sean. It's in the introduction, and also go look up more about Evan Britton at his his uh, website at evanbritton.com. Yeah. Bring the hurt. Exactly. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. All right. Take care. Thank you, Sean. Okay, guys. Bye bye.